all of us of a certain age um, have our own memories of Polaroid cameras, um, of making Polaroid pictures, of uh, watching them come out of the camera and develop in front of your eyes. The camera itself is so really simple and easy to use. There were so many things that you could do with this camera and you could make adjustments in the, um, from dark to light, uh, you could focus. So this wonderfully simple, elegant piece of equipment that just you know folds up flat uh, became a tremendous artistic tool. We got a call back in March of 2009 um, when, regrettably, Polaroid was part of a bankruptcy proceeding for the Petters Group, um, and we were called in to appraise the collection. Before we went to Massachusetts to actually look at what was there, I think we each had our own ideas about what Polaroid represented. When we got there, we realized we were encountering the most incredible range of material. There was also probably the best collection of Ansel Adams photographs in private hands that I've ever seen, um, and a whole group of photographs um, that Ansel Adams bought for the Polaroid collection that were completely new to us. What we will be selling uh, at Sotheby's is only a very small portion of a collection which numbers over 10,000 images. Ansel Adams met Edwin Land in 1948, which was the year that the first Polaroid camera was marketed. Um, they became personal friends, they became professional friends, um, Ansel Adams was very involved in the development of Polaroid technology and Polaroid film. Um, they had a friendship which lasted for decades. And consequently, the Polaroid Corporation um, owned one of the largest collections of Ansel Adams in private hands. And they owned everything. They owned great, great mural-sized photographs of some of Adams' most famous images. Um, this one is one that everybody knows, um, Moonrise Hernandez, New Mexico. Um, they owned the many wonderful prints made with Polaroid cameras. This is a lovely little seascape uh, from circa 1950. This would be one of the earliest photographs in the collection. And then they have a whole range of photographs in the 16 by 20 format. Um, this wonderful view of Yosemite was made with Polaroid uh, type 55 positive negative film in 1968. Um, the wealth of Adams material in this collection is overwhelming. What we have here is a unique 4x5 type 55 print uh, that would have been paired originally um, with the negative. Adams took the negative from this image and was able to blow it up to 16 by 20 size. And what's amazing is that if you look closely at it, you see very little grain. The resolution is very fine. In fact, the resolution is so fine that he could take it one step further and actually enlarge it to the size of a mural. And again, if you get up on it and look closely at it, you see a phenomenal amount of detail, very little grain, and just an absolutely gorgeous photograph. In 1956, um, Edwin Land and Ansel Adams decided to start adding other types of photographs to the Polaroid collection. They did not want the Polaroid collection of photography to become completely compartmentalized around Polaroid. They wanted to expand what the collection represented. They wanted to give Polaroid employees some idea of the creative range of photography using all kinds of cameras. And so that year, Edwin Land gave Ansel Adams a small stipend to start buying photographs not Polaroid photographs, but other types of photographs. Ansel, of course, was very well connected to members of the photographic community, um, and he went out immediately and began to approach his friends, um, artists whose work he admired, 
um, and started to put together what became known as the library collection because it was installed and stored in Polaroid's library. What's so surprising and great about the collection, um, and for photographic connoisseurs this is the ultra important question, we know when these pictures were printed because we know when they entered the collection. And so, for instance, this wonderful range of photographs that we have here, these two very beautiful William Garnett aerial views, this wonderful famous minor white image, and this view by Harry Callahan of his wife and daughter standing near a train station in Chicago, these are all images that were made in the 1950s. What's great is that these were all images that were printed in the late 1950s because that is when they were added to the collection. Polaroid has always been interested uh, in uh, how photographers are using their products and what photographers are doing with their products. And that dates really from Ansel Adams's involvement from the company's very beginnings. Um, later on, they started a more formal program uh, whereby film or the use of cameras uh, would be given to artists uh, and artists would uh, give uh, the company back uh, some of the photographs uh, resulting from their use of them. Some photographers um, found in Polaroid um, the ideal material to suit their vision. Uh, David Leventhal was one of those people uh, and he's one photographer whose work is principally known through his Polaroids. The Polaroid Artist Support Program was a, a really unique um, effort on the part of Polaroid to enable artists such as myself to receive film and also time on the large format Polaroid camera. Uh, essentially it was sort of a barter system. The work that I initially bartered with Polaroid uh, for film was the uh, Wild West work. I was born in 1949 and grew up in the 50s, and television back in those days was literally half of the programs were Westerns. So the Wild West work really sort of drew me back to that period. I found the, the richness of the Polaroid color because there is no enlargement, was very reminiscent of the sort of technicolor uh, that one would see in those old films. The SX-70 was really my introduction to Polaroid and to the Polaroid materials. Um, it's sort of interesting because the SX-70 was really, you know, the camera where you bought the film at the local drugstore. Uh, but artists, I think, found that, you know, you could manipulate the prints. Uh, there were many things that you could do with them. Some of the work that's in the sale of my SX-70 Polaroids um, are the modern romance pieces. And those were done, that was a series that was done really exclusively uh, with the SX-70 camera. One of the artists who made the most inventive use of Polaroid materials is Lucas Samaras. Um, he started working with Polaroid in 1969. The Polaroid company actually gave him one of their new SX-70 cameras in 1972. And he realized that the emulsion in an SX-70 print remains soft as it's developing, and even for a little while after. He started manipulating the images, pushing and pulling the emulsion, creating effects that are sometimes surreal, sometimes phantasmagoric, and completely original. Lucas Samaras worked across all Polaroid formats from the very small SX-70s um, to something as big as this, uh, which was made on a camera that was housed in Boston's Museum of Fine Arts and called the Museum Camera. It's a 80 inch by 40 inch format. It's essentially a room sized camera. And in fact, one of the technicians who uh, would assist the photographer in taking the image actually would be inside the camera while the photograph was being made, advancing the film and uh, adjusting the shutter. What I think is fascinating about Samaras and his use of this camera is that you tend to think of Samaras as someone who worked in his own home studio, worked with himself, and that's one of the reasons he liked the small Polaroids is that he could work on his own. You find him in an environment like this, where he's working with 
a very large camera and working with technicians, yet every bit of his inventiveness and his imagination is very apparent. From June 16th to the morning of June 21st, uh, we will have an exhibition of everything that we're selling at Sotheby's um, in our York Avenue premises, and we are pretty much going to take over the entire building. Um, we will have floor after floor after floor of Polaroid photographs and photographs from the Polaroid collection. We invite everyone to take this opportunity, which we believe will be unique, to see all of this work hung at the same time. We're very excited about the exhibition. We're very excited about the sale, which will take place on June 21st and 22nd. And we want to say everyone's welcome to come.